one Sunday afternoon when I was 13 years old, I came across an article in the Sunday Times. It was headed, Aristocrats, Alcohol, and Adultery. <laughs> well, there were three reasons to read it right there. <laughs> the article described a woman, a woman called Idina Sackville, one of the great seducers of her time, who could quite easily, it was said, whistle a chap off a branch. In the 1920s and 1930s, living high in the Kenyan hills, she entertained her guests in her bathroom as she lay naked in her green onyx bath. She divorced and married a total of five times and had lovers without number. I was hooked. <laughs> but it was only 10 minutes later that part of my life was turned upside down when my mother confessed a long-held secret. Idina was my great-grandmother. My mother had been so anxious that my sister and I might think Idina a role model. <laughs> that, <laughs> this is true. That she, she hadn't told us about her until the article forced her hand. Well, Mum, now, now I knew that I'd had a great-grandmother who entertained her guests. She lay naked in the bath. This is not what, age 13, I expected great-grandmothers to do. <laughs> My fascination with Idina grew. In fact, it bubbled inside me for almost two decades until I was in my early 30s. That was the age at which Idina was on her third husband, a man who happened to be a whole decade younger than her. And I needed to find out her whole story. And so that's how I became a writer of stories about women who break the rules. The book I subsequently wrote about Idina was called The Bolter, for Idina had run off. She had abandoned her handsome, fantastically rich husband for a penniless man, and in doing so was forced to flee to the other side of the world. And wow, what followed with husbands two to five, highs and lows love and loss, even a murder, then eventual redemption. Sounds just like politics. <laughs> but at the heart of the story is a story of bravery and emotional survival. Idina dared to step outside convention. As was written in a novel about her, she broke through every restraint of caste and chastity. More about Idina at the end. Another book I've written about a woman who broke the rules and survived is Lilla's Feast. Lilla was a great-grandmother of mine too, but a girl next door rather than a notorious sinner. The rules Lilla broke were quite different. After Pearl Harbor, the Japanese, who had invaded China, interned Lilla in a prison camp, not unlike the one in the movie of J.G. Ballard's Empire of the Sun. In her cell, Lilla secretly wrote a recipe book and not for the barely edible and barely existent camp food that the Japanese were giving them, but one full of recipes for things like cream puffs, butterscotch, garantine of beef, things for the life that she was determined to return to. And typing out that book gave Lilla hope and kept her alive. And today I'm writing about another extraordinary woman, a 19th century adventurer called Annie Brassey. Driven abroad by ill health, Annie did the very un-Victorian thing of taking her four surviving and young children with her as she sailed around the world. However, disapproving as the Victorians may have been, they were gripped by the result. Her ensuing book was such an international bestseller that it became a textbook in the US and here in Britain, her publishers invented a new, cheap, sixpenny format just to meet the demand. So what did these three wonderful women have in common? Well, of course, determination. But they had more than this. They were optimists. After all, Idina had to be. One marriage, conventional. Two, hopeful. Three, definitely enthusiastic. <laughs> I think five could only possibly be called wildly optimistic. 
Meanwhile, Lilla's writing of recipes for life beyond the prison camp. And remember, they had no idea whether they would ever be released or what world it would be to. Required optimism for every new page. And as Annie's boat was tossed through the Magellan Straits, caught fire and was becalmed for a month in the South Pacific with dwindling supplies, she never flagged in keeping up morale amongst the 40 souls on board. And there was something else. These women turned their disadvantages into the very advantages that would drive them to success. Annie turned her illness into celebrity. Lilla survived the camp and achieved a lasting legacy when, at the age of 97, to her immense pride, her recipe book was displayed in the front hall of the Imperial War Museum. And Idina, she turned flight as a social outlaw, outlaw into a life in the African hills so magical that where she lived became known as Happy Valley. But that probably had more to do with bed hopping than wildlife. <laughs> So these are just three women whose stories I happen to have discovered. Defying convention, drive, optimism, and turning setbacks into leaps forward are common to many stories of success. And in this room, there are many of you who have done just that. Thank you. <laughs>